The next talks will be about food and feed reformulations. And I'm pleased to announce Josep Kuma Posada. Um, he's, he works at the Institute of Agri Every food research and technology, short IRTA, and he's an associate professor at the University of Girona. And I'm happy to give the microphone to you. Thank you very much. Okay, good morning to everybody. Thanks for the presentation. And now is the turn to present the results of the food and feed reformulation done in the Prefuture project. Many people have been involved in this uh, work package. Uh, many companies, uh, food companies, and also research institutes. We'll see all of them uh, through, the, uh, through the presentation. No. OK. We will go through the objectives and uh, the results uh, uh, that we got and uh, how we reach these objectives. Then, the objectives were four. The first one was uh, the defining the technical uh, prerequisites of the microorgan protein ingredients. The second one was assessing the interaction of the microorgan protein rich ingredients in the target matrices. And the third and four was uh, designing and producing food and feed at pylon plant level and characterizing the quality, safety, and shelf life of these food and feed products. Uh, the first uh, objective about defining prerequisites, this was done in algo source uh, with IMMA also. And in this case, uh, uh, we gathered information uh, to the partners at the kickoff meeting of the project in Barcelona, of the Prefuture project, and also was sent a questionnaire uh, to these feed and food partners to, to know uh, which uh, were their needs. Yeah? And from there, uh, the information of these questionnaires gave us already all this uh, type of uh, microalgae that uh, was, has been presented before by IMA, the protein isolates, purified microorgan proteins uh, with a uh, protein content over 60% and also the single cell proteins, uh, bulk microorgan proteins with 40-50% uh, protein. But also um, the partners were interested in other properties. Uh, we can see the talking functional properties. Some of them they are more interesting than others. We can see here water solubility, water holding that are for them is much more important than others like foaming or gel strength. But also uh, for the partners was interesting uh, the digestibility that should be high, the, the uh, amino acid profile that should contain all the amino acids, the color should be light, and the taste, aroma, and also it's important that the answer of these questionnaires gave that the, the, these partners would be willing to pay up to 30, 50 euros per kilo of these um, protein isolates. And about the bulk proteins, they would be willing up to 10 euros per kilo. About the second objective, assessing the interaction of the microalgae and protein rich ingredients in the target matrices. Uh, this work was done at ILBO with Simon. If we have any question, we can ask him and Gerd. And uh, in this sense, okay, we evaluated the techno-functional property, sorry, the techno-functional properties, eh, foaming capacity, emulsion capacity, water holding capacity and solidity of uh, the different cell um, proteins, eh, ingredients, uh, chloral bulgaris, tetasium uh, nanochloropsis, and arthrospira platensis, the spirulina. And, of course, we uh, uh, got this functionality under different conditions of the food matrices, changing uh, mycology concentration, pH value, salt concentration, and uh, the applying different processing temperatures. About results, very summarized results, just saying that different food, uh, different relevant food parameters have distinctive effects on functional properties, eh, which are in some cases, a specific, um, a species specific, and also that general trends eh, are observable for all microalgae uh, protein ingredients. 
in fact, the pH is the most uh, influential parameter. Eh? Uh, pH being possibly correlated uh, with uh, foaming, with emulsifying, and water um, properties. We can see here, for instance, that when we increase pH from 3 to 9, all these uh, values of, in this, in this case, the emulsion capacity increases. And uh, now, uh, I start talking about the all work done in this uh, food and feed. I present the feed products, and later on, my colleague Gert will present the, uh, I will start talking with food, and my, my colleague Gert Wiggerman will talk about uh, feed products. Okay. Then about foods. When we start the project, we had only these three uh, strains, smooth chlorella, tetraceumis, chui, and spirola platensis. And for us to, to, to feed this microalgae to the different products we have been working was quite difficult. Uh, at the end of the project, we've, uh, we got all the strains, uh, all these strains that have been uh, improved uh, for the first stage of the project, Yago and Inma. Uh, and this helped us. To, to feed all this uh, microalgae to the food. Okay? Therefore, it's very important just this research uh, of this uh, uh, making research on new uh, strains to be able to feed all this protein from microalgae uh, to the food and, of course, to the need of the consumers. In this case, we start now with the different foods we have been uh, worked. And in this case, the company Tradizione Padane, Italian company, they had the aim of uh, getting a vegan organic dry pasta, uh, high in protein and fiber claims, and with a lighter color than the pasta with the spirulina they have in the market, eh? with this one. Uh, several studies were done. Sorry, yes. Several studies were done uh, with, in this case, the use uh, chlorella, uh, smooth chlorella, honey, new honey, and white chlorella. Uh, also, tetracycline chewy, at uh, different uh, concentrations. Uh, but also, they uh, added, they studied, or they tested uh, gluten just to, to help reaching this high uh, pr protein claim, and also fibers just to be able to reach this uh, high fiber <coughs> claim. In this case, at the end of all the, the, the results, they, they end with uh, the final recipe, that is the one that has been scanned up at industrial level, with fusilli, at, uh, and they, it contains 3% of uh, smooth chlorella and 5.2% of uh, organic apple fiber. In this case, um, they found that it was not possible to reach uh, a claim high in fiber only with uh, with microalgae, um, and they choose three percent uh, of microalgae just to avoid uh, fishy flavors or uh, uh, this type of, of aspects. And uh, when try to add gluten for increasing the protein content, uh, it showed that. Uh, it didn't give good results, eh? just bubble gum like uh, uh, texture and of some of flavors, and they skip. And this is why finally they decide to get a, a, a claim source of protein. While in fiber, only the organic apple fiber was also they good. They took they got good results. Eh? The the other fibers they they tried they didn't get good results. This is why it's high in fiber. The next product is the, the microalgae soup development. In this case, uh, the Swiss company, Alver, uh, they aim at also to have a vegan organic clean label uh, with a carrot ginger uh, flavor, high in protein claim, and with a long shelf life. This is why it's uh, dry powder form. In this case, also several studies were done. Uh, they uh, uh, make the studies with a smooth chlorella, honey chlorella, new honey, and white chlorella. They also tested ingredients like pea protein, just also to reach this high protein claim. They need 
also uh, uh, orange carrot powder from GODN uh, just to improve color, uh, playing also with the color of the, of the, of the microalgae. And for the, the flavor and taste also, also they had to play with uh, some carrot aromas and uh, several spices just to get uh, the, the final product. Uh, the, the, is the one that has been scanned up uh, a soup with 5% of a new honey chlorella. The next product is the microalgae sausage, the plummet. In this case, the German company Viva Maris, they aim it to have a vegan sausage uh, with a low impact to taste and uh, also light colored uh, to avoid a green sausage. In this case, uh, they work also with several uh, strains, golden chlorella, honey chlorella, new honey, and white chlorella. We can see here uh, that when they added 3% honey chlorella and new honey chlorella, the color was too yellow for the low. Uh, while when they uh, work with white, 3% uh, white chlorella, the color was nice, but not the taste. This is why at the end they choose uh, uh, the, um, uh, the sachets with 3% of golden chlorella. And this is the, the one that has been scaling up at the industrial level. Next product is the microalgae uh, Beckett Goods. In this case, the Portuguese company Calais, uh, they had the aim of increasing nutritional value uh, of their products uh, with a low impact to taste and the aspect. And during the work, it was uh, optimized the formulation for the different uh, Beckett products. In this case, uh, Grissini, Craker, Cruton, Muffin, and Brioche uh, was studied, or, or yes. Uh, and uh, they apply, in this case, only uh, spirulina, after spiroplatensis, as smooth chlorella and tetaselmis eh, at, different, uh, at different concentrations. Uh, and then, after the sensory analysis and uh, consumer studies, uh, they selected to scale up these three products, eh, the Grissini and Crutons with 3% of chlorella, and uh, crackers with 1.5% of spirulina. Uh, still more work should be done with uh, muffins and brioche, maybe also using other uh, strains just to help uh, changing the color and the aspect. The next product is the vegetable cream with microalgae. In this case, uh, the Spanish company Gutarra. Uh, they aim it also to have a vegetable cream, a high in protein claim and with a texture similar to the, the, the one that they have, uh, they have in, the, in the market. In this case, also, uh, uh, we did different studies and different uh, strains were checked, were studied. In this case, we see uh, how uh, the color uh, uh, is affected by the stained use. Uh, you can see here, uh, tetacillum and spirulina are the darker ones. But the same, eh? the taste and flavor was uh, changing depending on the strain. The consistency of these uh, soups, in this case, um, uh, we work it between three, uh, uh, 1.5 and 6% uh, of concentrations just to reach the high protein claim. Um, and in this case, increasing the, the, the microalgae content increased the, also the consistency. And just notice that Theta cell mystery eh, is the one that has uh, the stronger fishy color and salty taste. And because of this, it was discarded uh, from this type of product, the vegetable cream. It didn't fit to this one. And this is due probably because it's, it's cultivated in, in salted uh, water. Um, the final receipt that has been scaled up is this cream with 1.5% of spirulina. And the last group of products is the sport bars and drink. In this case, uh, Enervit, Italian company, uh, they aim to improve nutritional properties of these uh, products, uh, protein content mainly, of sport bars and instant shake meal replacement. And also, uh, several studies were done. In this case, we show one study with different uh, strains at different uh, levels uh, of addition, and the same. Eh? The color um, it depends on the strain, 
the same taste and flavor, and the level of addition also enhance uh, these effects. Also, a, a point about the, the candy um, uh, attribute uh, that gave uh, some of this uh, microalgae that is good if you think to develop uh, sweet products, so can be good, eh? uh, developing this type of product. And also in Airbit, they uh, scale up two products. Eh? One sports bars with 5% spirulina and an instant shake meal replacement with 5% of chlorella. In fact, uh, Mary Christine told me that we will be able to taste these products uh, tonight, I think. Mm. If you want to go deeper to results, there are some publications going on. Uh, some of them are already published. And OK, uh, they are uh, open access. Yes. And just uh, ending uh, this food part with some remarks. Well, just saying that the addition of microalgae ingredients to food products is feasible. That research and development must be done to adapt the best microalgae strain to the food. It's not uh, so easy. You must make some uh, trials. And also very important that new strains must be developed to facilitate the addition to a of this microalgae to specific <laughs> food products. Also, expanding just uh, the protein isolates. Eh? It's needed to be developed and tested. And finally, just saying that the price of microalgae ingredients may limit a general uh, use in foods. That's it, and now I, I give the floor to my colleague uh, Gerd Bruggerman. It's fine that uh, he will continue with the, with the feed part. Is, is it okay? Thank you. To ask questions before or at the end to both of you? <laughs> Maybe at the end we'll see how the, the time okay. we have. Okay, then Gerd uh, works at Nutrition Sciences and co-animated innovative ideas resulting into the extensive patent portfolio of the company, and he will talk about feed reformulations. Thanks uh, for the kind introduction. Indeed, uh, next to the, the food part, uh, the, the feed part, myself here, Brugman, one of the private partners in uh, the consortium, and why did we join this innovation action? Indeed, to bridge the gap from algae, what's known from theory, towards real application. Um, we are based in Belgium, and uh, Indeed, two sections, why feed reform reformulation our business, and the next one, what about the feed uh, reformulations. Now, why feed reformulations? Because we are in an urgent need for new types of protein sources. Today, we mainly use soy, as you see, as a major um, protein source. At the moment, 80% of the global soy production goes towards feed. So it's an, an enormous amount. And when we talk about Europe alone, 25 million tons of feed or soy bean meal is processed in the animal feed, and 15 million tons of soybeans are going to that direction. So it means a lot of uh, soy is used. And the other one is indeed fish meal outside the European Union. The animal species where we talk about today are the terrestrial animals, pigs and poultry, so we were mainly involved in the pig feed formulation, which is huge volumes. Ilsta more in the, in the poultry feed uh, formulations. And then we had also partner Vita4, who is present there in the back of, of the room, uh, dealing with aquaculture, so carp and catchfish. And then scrims represented by Inve, by Celine, also in the back of the room. Now, um, indeed, as we all know, we are looking for sustainable solutions, but Marisa will talk later on about the sustainability part. Are they at sustainable and to what extent? Because, indeed, soy is mainly related towards uh, deforestation. For sure, a lot of efforts are already made in that field. Eh? I mean, uh, there are already existing um, responsible soy, so a lot of efforts by major players are already made. In the beginning of the project, this was less the case. On the other hand, fish meal is produced to produce fish. So it's even in, in some kind of cannibalism that is used. So in terms of ethics and sustainability, a lot can be discussed over there. Now, um, to cope with the sustainability goals of the, of the United Nations, as well as uh, the Green Deal and the European Union, this was our commitment to the project. 
Now, there exist already some, some, some alternatives. Today, a lot of effort is based on the first one, biomass. Using biomass from all kinds of food industries in our business. Think in terms of DDGS as an example, the, the distilled or grain solubles. Whey permeates, or cheese production produces a lot of whey. Distilled or grains, um, um, distilled or grains from the brewery industry, or distilled or, uh, yeast is also already used in, in our business, but still has a lot of bottlenecks, mainly drying because our business is a dry market. There's also a shift towards liquid feeding at the moment, but it's still a problem. The other one was plant-based proteins, leguminosa, the, the lupins, the, the, the faba beans, the, all these kinds of, 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 uh, of um, vegetable um, alternatives. There we still have also some issues, eh? yields in Europe, eh? because it's mainly produced in Argentina, Brazil, and so on, where the climate is good. In Europe, we have a standstill at that moment. We had a standstill. Now a lot of efforts are made in that respect, but okay, still a lot of work to do. Single cell protein is the other one. So single cell protein in terms of fermentation. So fungal biomass as an example. That's also good, but uh, yeah, still some work to do. Eh? Like for instance, in Belgium, we have now some nice initiatives um, that, that are coping with that. Still some grouping there, but still a worry to go. Insect proteins. These companies are booming now as well, but still some, some bottlenecks. And then, yeah, what's remaining? Uh, macro and microalgae. And that's indeed why we are in the project, to see what we can do there and to see where we can bridge the gap towards the real implementation. Good, so ProFuture has a role to play and a right to play. So that's an important uh, point. Good, the second part is we try to formulate this algae that we receive from the pro-future partners into diets, because there it starts. We can do a lot of animal trials or, or, or thinking about replacement, but when you cannot formulate them, then you have a problem. So in first instance, that's the feed production process, so a lot of steps where we have to cope with, because it's a dry market. It means it has to be compatible with feed solid materials with minerals, because we use a lot of concentrates and parameters, so very aggressive um, raw materials. So we have to check the compatibility with these types of, um, of raw materials. So this brought us to um, assembling samples from the partners. As you see, limited amounts in first instance. And okay, thanks to the partners uh, here also present, we received them in good shape and we focused on single cell proteins, not on the isolates. Why? Because isolates are too expensive. When we look for the moment, the benchmark for price, when we use soy more or less, we count around one and a half euro per kilogram feet. It's not a lot. So, so it means we have to, to, to make the exercise not too difficult. We have to look for the best feasible production, best feasible solution. So what we did is uh, we, we received the different algae at the moment, and then we mixed them in different feed matrices, simple feed. So simple feed, low aggressivity, till very heavy feeds. Heavy feeds where, for instance, you have a lot of howlankerite, and there was a question already earlier about the antioxidation power uh, or the oxidative power of, of the, the algae. This can be harmed by these types of minerals. And then we try to replace part of the protein because it's utopia to think that we can replace all protein. Because when we see the volumes today available in the market, they are still quite low. I would be already happy if I could replace a few percentages of, of, of soy or fish meal. So we did different substitution degrees and different temperatures. And you see uh, temperature is increasing year by year in the European Union as well, and not only outside the European Union. So we have to take care that at least the shelf life of the feed is six months. It's a lot. Six months, this algae has to be stable for six months in the feed. So that's why we accelerated it by higher temperatures and saving them also for six months. And that's uh, the last line. Different matrices, as you see. Eh? So the conventional uh, raw materials were presented, barley, corn, so the, 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 the carbon sources. And then soy meal was replaced by, by the algae uh, sample, sorry for the Dutch uh, language, or mixed Dutch-English. Yeah? And then, indeed, replacement and the samples. And then, indeed, characterize them for visibility. Uh, you, it's easy to mix them, but when they are there, and you cannot do something with them, then you have a problem. Yeah. So what we looked for was the particle sieving distribution, because it, it, we, we don't have something in silos that are blocked. 
it costs a lot of, of repairing, maintaining the silos, so we have to take care that it works there. The free flowing is as important because we are working with powder technology. Yeah? Then the visibility. We export a lot of products, and as you have already seen, the color is important. Green, as an example, you have to change that green stays green. That green does not fade towards light green, because then we have a quality issue, especially in the feed business. And the higher scopacity. Humid climates, different climates, so it can attract water. So a lot of potential bottlenecks. What are the major conclusions? Um, particle size distribution measure, difficult to measure because it's quite sticky, it's still wet, quite a lot of wetness, and hygroscopicity. The free flowing, mm -hmm. yeah, we could solve this by adding some silica, eh? so, so that at least the free flowing of the feet was uh, okay, but silica sustainability is another, is another question. And the visible stability, in the beginning we had some problems in terms of stability, I mean, the, the color faded away, you will see it in some next slides, but okay, this was solved by, by looking for the packaging as well. The packaging that we have light, tight, and airtight packaging, this solved the problem. As soon as this was not the case, um, then you had the problem. To some pictures here, here that's the starting point, eh? and then you see some color changes happening during conservation uh, for six months further. Yeah. This is the feet, and we did similar for concentrates. So we did a lot of measurements at the end, and we saw a lot of changes, but we could at the end control it. I think that was important by looking for the good packaging and the good mixing technology. Hygroscopicity, the same. As you see, no standard light, and it depends on the type of algae. Some increase hygroscopicity, others decrease it. But when it becomes too dry, then you have also problems. Then you have uh, humidity disintegration, what causes huge problems in industry. So in other words, after three months, all samples showed a decrease in quality, mainly due to the presence of minerals that were present. But at the end, indeed, we could uh, solve most of the problems. And we did not decide to work together at further with tetracelmonies in our case. Um, because indeed uh, we saw also some, uh, some strong smell. Uh, sometimes it tended to a rotten smell, but okay, what's rotten? Uh, uh, it depends on sensory characteristics, but uh, it's very sensitive for piglets. When a piglet, a piglet doesn't like the smell, it does not eat. So no animal production, no meat. Uh, so I think that's an important point. At the end, we did some trials. Eh? We mixed them and the story is told, I think, later on by Alex, uh, what, what were the results. So, in other words, we succeeded. Then scrims, eh, done by, uh, by INVI. The trial is still starting with scrims in, Aqua, in Ecuador, as I understand uh, well, at the other side of the world. The good news is we were able to formulate diets with that as well. Um, this is a nice opportunity because uh, the less possibilities in piglet feed, because we need the volumes for scrims, is another story. Sometimes we enter more a niche market, and there indeed that's less cru crucial the volumes. Then a lot of work was done for poultry feeds at IRTA, yes. And uh, sorry for the messy uh, slide here, but what we want to show here is that uh, we checked hygroscopicity, the flowability, the particle di and this in vitro digestibility. And at the end, indeed, we were able to formulate diets out of that. Eh? They all showed some different uh, characteristics uh, of that, but by good management of the feed uh, composition, uh, the good composition of the uh, feed, uh, we could uh, also formulate diets out of that, and also the results will be presented by uh, Alex after this, uh, after this presentation. Last but not least, Vitafor, who made some uh, nice feeds as well, because there is an extra challenge, eh? because some feet has to sink to the bottom, other ones has to float. So there we have indeed also to see where we manage not only the composition of the diet, but also the, the physical chemical characteristics of, of, uh, of the diet. So uh, for the CART trials, indeed, uh, good, some good feeds were formulated, um, including um, 10 to 20 percent algae, and the same for the African, African uh, catfish. And also their soy was indeed uh, uh, the replacement. So um, there was a successful control feed production. It took some time, eh? uh, but at the end we managed uh, it. So thanks for that, uh, Vitafor. 
And then at the end, uh, there was an identification of the two most promising algae strains. The other consortium members mainly worked with, uh, with nanochloropsis because this was the best one. Why also? Because we have learned that it causes less physical um, interaction in terms of viscosity. We, can avoid, we have to avoid viscosity in the gastrointestinal tract when we have too much it's not an earthquake, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Belgium and earthquakes. Uh, but, uh, so, um, we have to avoid viscosity, viscosity in, uh, in, in the gastrointestinal uh, tract because this can delay digestion uh, when you have too much viscosity. That's why we also look for tetracelminis. Here, indeed, uh, we worked with nanochloropsis and chlorella and also the, the Trials are now finished, I think, uh, Martin. Uh, yes. So uh, also some results will be presented by, uh, by, um, by Alex. Here you see an example of the different, two different feeds that were formulated. The one sinking for the carp, because the carp lives at the bottom of the, of the water. And the African catfish, yes, lives not at the bottom, is floating. And as you see, it, uh, they were able to, uh, to formulate the good diets with this algae. So the technical suitability of the production was good. The good water quality is good because the leaching effect has to be measured. Eh? And the, the dissolving in water, this was cross-checked, was checked. And then the good nutritional uh, value. And here you see again the, the formulations that will go into the animal trials. So that's in a nutshell. So in conclusion, we could formulate diets. This was the first surprise, yeah, uh, that we could do that. And now, for sure, they have to perform. And this, uh, you will see the results in, uh, in the next uh, presentation. Thanks to all partners, especially Vitafor, uh, uh, for the patience, in first instance. And, 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 uh, and thanks for the great work done. Invi as well, looking forward for the, for the, for the trial results, uh, more to the end of, of the year. And then IRTA, for sure, the poultry trials are done already. In fir some first chicken fillets are checked and also some surprising results. But this will be explained by Alex. Thank you. And some questions. Here is a, is a place. Uh, Professor is joining. Yeah. For lots of uh, lots of questions. Oh, yeah. uh, you, first of all, uh, you, the scientists of Europe in this field, you are doing a very tremendous work. But there are a lot of questions. For example, you speak for proteins, and uh, the proteins, the the animal proteins. Here we don't have neither an animal nor a plant. This algae. So we don't know uh, what's the absorption if we get this protein from this kind of uh, organism, what's the absorption in, our, in, in us? Uh, second, you are uh, oriented, you are speaking a lot of times because it's connected with sugar, with uh, glucose and, uh, and gluten. And in gluten we have problems in the research on the health sector. Uh, uh, especially we know for sure for, for celiac diseases and for, uh, and for uh, diabetes. Uh, and we are researching on the cancer issues for the gluten. Uh, and also you are uh, mixing uh, pastas and all this kind of stuff, which lately on the research of the, of the Alzheimer and all these kind of diseases, we have a problem with amyloids because they create holes in our brain. So it's, it's a bad news for pasta. But of course, you can eat pasta uh, and mixtures of pastas uh, every six months or once. Uh, for the Italians, it's not a good new, <laughs> but, uh, but it's the science in this way. Uh, and um, about the spirulina, uh, uh, you, you, you speak for, an, after three months, you, uh, there is an expiry date, let's say. But on, on the trade, uh, when we buy spirulina, even on pills or on powder, uh, they don't have an expiry date on it. Thank yes, you. maybe let's start with the first question eh, about uh, digestibility. Uh, digestibility trials are, are, are done, eh? you're right. And uh, I think uh, Alex will also uh, refer to these trials, as I remember. If not, I can explain. Eh? Yeah, so then I will explain. So indeed, uh, some, some digestible trials are, do are, are done, um, both for, for humans but also for, uh, for animals. Uh, when I refer towards the, the chicken trials, uh, and when we have the results from IRTA, please feel free to comment, uh, Josep, on that, um, then we see indeed a decrease in digestibility. 
So I think your, your remark is right, uh, that, that we see an, an initial uh, decrease in, in digestibility. And uh, in the meantime, since yesterday, the trials in piglets are also finished, eh? and I did not yet process all results, but the first impression is going in the same direction. So indeed, we have to take care that some, some anti-nutritional, new types of anti-nutritional factors pop up by using uh, um, 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 microalgae. Uh, that, that's for sure. And another type of anti-nutritional factor that can happen in the, in the gastrointestinal tract of animals, and now I'm talking about animals because for humans it can just be before, it can be an advantage, but in animals it's a disadvantage because in animals you want to increase digestion because the more protein you give, you want to have it transferred into meat more meat, so, so we have to increase uh, the digestion. What we see, and that's also why we, we look for tetracelminis, uh, in, uh, sorry, nanochloropsis in, in, in that respect, was um, looking to lower as much as possible the intrinsic viscosity in the gastrointestinal tract, yeah, to increase the potential digestion of nutrients, including minerals. So, so this was why we choose nanochloropsis. But indeed, you're right, I think in terms of, uh, of digestibility studies, we need some further profound research on that before we implement into the market. The other questions were more food-related, I think. Yeah. Well, about pasta, eh? you say... <coughs> uh, amyloids, amyloids, not only pasta. Yeah. And also the gluten. Yes, yes. Yes, of course, uh, we didn't take care of these uh, things. Uh, many words should be done on this. In fact, uh, I took away a remark in the presentation in this direction, eh, that research also and the must be done in this direction to know exactly uh, uh, which health benefits or this uh, inconvenience that, that may happen. And um, yes, also about this digestibility. Eh? Of course, uh, we don't have the, the level of a meat uh, protein uh, digestibility. Then there is a lot of things to, to, to go forward and to still to make research a long way. Just, just this. Thank you. Um, you looked at pelletization. Um, in aquaculture, extrusion is uh, the, the common uh, method. Did you look at the effect on extrusion? on the algae? Um, I have to check with, uh, with Celine eh, on the extrusion of the, of, of the feeds if you observe some, some specific uh, um, abnormalities or, or things like that. No? No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed, at one side you have indeed the, the micro scrims. Eh? Yeah, so, so for yeah. us it's fine. But also, yeah, we extrude and we break and sieve because we are really in the larval stages. So we are talking about particle sizes smaller than 100 micrometers and between 100 and 200 micrometers. So this is very, very small. Yeah, that's true. So it's, it's completely different while Vita4 needs to have this specific characteristics of their particles. I think maybe they can find can some. Can you that, Martin? Yeah. Give the mic. Yes, sorry, what was the question? Of the effects of extrusion. If you see an effect of extrusion, the feed composition, the effect of algae. So, yes. Uh, well, the influence of extrusion was quite interesting in this topic because. Uh, First or main aim was to see if the feed can be extruded at all, because with some algae strains it was not not uh, possible or was not homogeneous like tetrasamis, as Gert mentioned it uh, before. But um, well, at the end we or main point with these particle sizes was to meet with the requirements of the fish, basically, because we discussed it with our colleagues and uh, with these uh, extruder machines we had to produce uh, as big pellets or extrudes as it can be consumed by the fish. It was successful, it was well extruded, so we had no problem with this, and uh, as Alex will show it later, it was no problem with the feeding experiments as well. So the fish could consume it, and they grow uh, quite well. 
Thank you, Martin. And indeed, for the terrestrial animals, we have uh, poultry feed and uh, and piglet feed, but that's no uh, extrusion. Um, that is best case palletization. We did not do that. Uh, I mean, uh, we used uh, the Belgian formula, so then it's, it's it's meal as such. We do not use a French formula or, or a Dutch formula. In that, that respect, and and for the the poultry feed, yeah, most of times scrambled feed. So 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 this is less a question. But as I learned from uh, from Marton as well from Celine, indeed uh, the extrusion did not pose huge problems. Uh, yes. I just wanted to make a comment about the digest digestibility, uh, because uh, in these trials we compared nanochloropsis, the whole biomass, so not the protein of nanochloropsis. We compared the, the cells with the protein of soya. So it's a disadvantage of nanochloropsis. You use a whole cell, you still have to break the cell eh? in terms of digestibility. Indeed, it's a confounding factor. You're right. Yeah. Any other question? No? Oh, yes. Sorry. Yeah. Um, you mentioned um, in your presentation that um, the nanochloropsis and the um, chlorella are the best um, strains. So I would like to ask that at what percentage can it best replace, for example, soybean meal? Um, in um, parameters such as um, digestibility and group performance for... Yes, uh, the fact that I will not uh, talk about the clue of the presentation of Alex. Eh? I will keep the cliffhanger over there. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but indeed, we, we tested different, uh, different uh, percentages. And uh, depending on the animal species, the results are different. That's what I can yeah, say. I but was the details going to mention, like, for example, in piglets. Yeah. Let's say in pigs, for example. Yeah, mm -hmm. like... And in Piclix, I have relatively good news. You will see it in the presentation. All of, right, uh, thank you very much. Okay. If not, okay. Then, thank you very much. Thank you.